So we are discussing the properties of salts, the properties of ionic compounds. Those things are synonymous. And their properties result from what they do as crystals. Because salts make crystal lattices, okay, and I have a very basic crystal lattice down here, which is nothing more than positive ions and negative ions being uh, interdispersed in a crystal in a regular repeating pattern. We say that salts or ionic compounds are generally in the solid phase. Okay, and because they're in the solid phase and because they make crystal patterns, they have distinct properties. So this is a crystal. Crystal lattice is another word for it, but they're solids. Ionic compounds are always solids, okay, unless you add tremendous amount of heat because the attraction force between a positive and negative ion is extremely high that coulombic force extremely high so if you think about this the properties of ionic compounds result from the fact that these positive ones or negative ones in some cases positive two and negative two attract each other so strongly that they have to be in the solid phase and one of the things you need to know is that because they're in there's such a high attraction and they exist in this crystal pattern because this crystal pattern as I've shown you isn't two-dimensional it's three-dimensional so if you think about this positive ion it's surrounded by another ion here another ion here and one behind it and one in front of it so every ion is surrounded by six other um, competing ions that keeps the ion in place you know we write sodium chloride table salt and we know we write it NaCl solid and I can't keep help helping you to understand this is really a sodium ion attracting a chloride ion you don't see any charges in the compound because they cancel out but it's not just one sodium ion and one chlorine ion we say that ionic compounds because they make crystals they make empirical formulas, the lowest ratio. So when we say sodium chloride solid as the formula, what we mean is the lowest ratio of the ions. So if you look at my very basic drawing, there's one black positive for one blue negative and it is dispersed into this crystal. That's why the formula has one sodium ion and one chlorine ion. So you have to understand, these compounds are very, very stable, extremely stable, which means they're low energy. What gives them their stability is the fact that they are in this structure, this three-dimensional crystal lattice, and they attract each other so strongly. So the first property of ionic compounds, you must know, is that their melting points are extremely high. It takes a lot of energy to separate them into their liquid or gaseous phase, or in this case, liquid phase. So the melting points are extremely high. That's the first you have to understand. They're solids at STP or room temperature because they attract each other so strongly. The strongest force of attraction occur in solids. Now the second one is how they conduct electricity. And this is very important. In fact, because they do so in a particular manner, they are called electrolytes. Electrolytes. Electrolytes are nothing more than ions that have an ability to conduct electricity. And salts, all ionic compounds, okay, are electrolytes. So it's very important you understand that. So the most important of all, besides the fact it takes a lot of energy to melt them, is that they have this ability to conduct electricity. But before I can talk more on how they particularly do that, we've got to take a step back and understand how, in fact, electricity can be conducted and there's two ways in this course you are held accountable for so the first way is we know that in order to conduct electricity if you have a metal so if I go back to this and we think about just pure old metals now we know metals by definition have a large radius and they hold on to electrons loosely because they hold on to electrons loosely these electrons in the metallic compound or the metal compound are free to move so what they have is free moving electrons. And why are they free to move? Because these electrons are not strongly attracted to the nucleus. And we've discussed that, and you should be discussing that. What makes a metal 
is that their electrons are loosely held because their atomic radius is big for reasons we've explained through the periodic table and atomic structure. So they have free moving electrons. Now why does a free moving electrons conduct electricity? Now a metals by themselves are not ionic compounds. You have to have, as we've talked about, a transfer of uh, ions or electrons to do that. But how do metals conduct is very important. So watch what we do here. If I was to put a negative charge right here, let's pretend this is a metal right here. If I put a negative charge right here, this electron being negative is repelled. So it would move, and it would be free to move if it was a metal. Well now, it just got close to another electron in the metal compound. This could be many metal atoms. But this electron is repelled, so it moves away. And it gets in close contact with another one, and that one's free to move, so a domino effect occurs. And all of a sudden, this charge, which is now negative, on this side of the compound, we'd say the negative charge was conducted all the way through the metal because the electrons were what? Free to move because they were loosely held. Okay, so what if you had a nonmetal? Well, nonmetals, as you should know, their electrons are held very tightly. They have a strong attraction for their electrons. Why? Well, because they have usually the greatest nuclear charge in their energy level. Okay, but they're smaller atoms. They have a great effective nuclear charge on these electrons, but they're held tightly. So if I was doing something for nonmetals, if I put a negative charge on this side, let's say of a piece of rubber, well, it might move just a little bit. It's not free to move. It moves a little bit, and that might move this one a little bit, but that's not enough to move this one. And of course, the charge never gets conducted because these don't have these are not free to move. So free moving electrons is what okay conduction of electricity in terms of metals and nonmetals is about now we're going to go back to all right our um, ionic compound down here with our crystal lattice now these guys down here and let's make some room these guys of course conduct electricity as well but they follow uh, they follow a very similar law that we need in order for my metals to conduct electricity or any compound the electrons have to be free to move. Now if you notice something, there is no free electrons in an ionic compound. The electrons were transferred. Okay, we talked about this at length. Sodium had its one valence electron and it was what? Given to the chlorine who had its seven valence electrons and this electron was transferred because the difference in electronegativity was great. So sodium becomes Na plus and chlorine negative. Well, guess what? There is no more electrons to be moved around because all electrons they have are now core electrons. So electrons aren't free to move, but what you have now are ions that are free to move. See, ions can conduct electricity much like free electrons can. And how can that be? Well, think for me for a second. If I had ions that were free to move, they would move toward place. Now the key here is that the ions have to be free to move. When they are in a solid phase, the ions cannot move. They're being locked by the other ions. They may wiggle, okay, in their fixed positions, but not enough to conduct a charge. So if I was to bring this charge, this negative charge back down here, okay, and bring it next to the crystal, it wouldn't be enough. You notice the positive wants to go toward it, the negative probably wants to move, but because of the strong electrostatic attraction, these guys can't move. They're locked in their fixed position, therefore nothing can move, and there is absolutely no charge conducted on this side. So in the solid phase, okay, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. So ionic do not conduct in the solid phase. So in the solid phase, they do not conduct. Very important. Okay? They, what? Have to be free. The ions have to be free in order to do so. Let's see what happens. Let's take this electrical charge out of here, and let's free these guys up. Let's pull them away from each other. Okay? Now how can we do that? Well, there's two ways. We can heat them, we heat them, they melt. 
Now it's going to take a lot of heat because they're very what? Very stable, highly attracted. So these can now, if they apply heat, they can pull away from each other. And now we have a, a liquid of, let's say, sodium chloride. Very possible. It will take a lot of heat. Let me get rid of, okay, all these things in between. Now, what's going to happen here? Well, we have a liquid, and now with a liquid, I'm now going to drop a negative charge in one side of the liquid. Let's say it's in a beaker or some kind of container. Now, this negative charge is going to do something very important. Because these ions are free, they're really free to attract or repel this negative charge. These negative charges, okay, is not going to like this negative charge, so they're going to repel. The positive ions, because they're now free to move now as liquids, okay, will go toward the negative. So all the positives would migrate to the negative charge. And essentially, these negatives would be repelled by that negative charge, and they would all move away. Whoa, if the negative charges are moving away, now what you have is all the negative charges on one side of the beaker. And this negative charge, my friends in chemistry, was conducted to the other side. From the negative ions moving away, you made this side negative. So you can see that as a liquid, this is an electrolyte. Ionic compounds only conduct when they're in the liquid state or the aqueous. So they are electrolytes in only two states, the liquid state or the aqueous state. Now, aqueous means dissolved in water, and we need to explain that, but very important you get that. In the solid state, as I just explained, you cannot conduct because the ions aren't free to move. So let's talk about the aqueous state. Okay, so one of the important properties is ionic compounds' ability to conduct in the what? Aqueous state or the liquid state. So ionic compounds or salts are called electrolytes because of their ability to conduct electricity in the liquid or aqueous phase. Now, in our body, we conduct electricity because we have ions that are in their aqueous state. They're dissolved. So, how does that work? Well, they make something called molecule ion attractions. I call these famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me play this um, video, maybe. And what we're going to have is a crystal lattice. There's our salt, sodium chloride, metal, nonmetal. And notice what's happening. We're going to learn about this, but water has a negative end and a positive. This is H2O. This is oxygen and two H's. Now these are not ionic compounds. They're covalent. They're made of oxygen and hydrogen. Hey, those are, those are nonmetals bonded to nonmetals. They make molecules. And we're going to learn that water has a negative end and a positive end. So the negative end of the water is going to be very attracted to the positive ions. And watch what happens. They totally surround them. Right? And if you look carefully, the positive end of water is going to attack the negative ions and totally surround them and pull them away. And that's how we dissolve salts. We pull them away from the crystal because we give them a competing charge with the water. Water is called polar molecule. And you can see the negative part surrounding the positive. There it is. And I call this famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend, because if you have a famous boyfriend and a famous girlfriend, wherever the couple may be, and they change all the time, I guess, if they're walking hand in hand, wouldn't they get bum rushed with a lot of people that would run up to them and they would separate them? All the guys surround the girl? Yeah, they would get separated the same way. And that's what I talk about molecule on attractions. But this is how they go. So if you keep going, you notice here's the famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend. Here's the boyfriend. He gets surrounded by all the girls, and the girl. I guess she's bigger, whatever, okay, is surrounded by the boys. But notice the positive end of the water surrounds the negative ion. And again, this is how ions are able to be free from the crystal. The water kind of helps them. Now, you say, well, they're being surrounded, but these still are free to move. The water would go with them. But that's how water becomes free. So we can dissolve, okay, the ions with water because water has two ends. It's got a positive end that attracts the negative, and it's got a negative end that attracts the positive and we're able to do that. Now, once those ions are free, as we talked about, the ions are free to move in solution. Pure water does not conduct electricity. It's the ions in the water that do so. And I'll show you, and I've, I showed you that demonstration today.
So what I'm showing you is a light bulb is lit up when two metals conduct uh, hit each other. Electricity can be conducted between the metals because they have free moving electrons. It's a demonstration I did today. A little Ernie I call a light bulb is lighting up for you. Again, because of the free moving electrons. Now what I'm going to do next, hopefully at some point, I'm going to pour some salt okay, on top like I did today. And when I do so, I should be able to conduct electricity. So I'm going to take some salt and a beaker. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to take some water. And I'm going to show you that water, and this water has no ions in it, it doesn't conduct electricity. It needs to have some ions. That's what I did today. Okay, so let's zoom this up a little bit. Now I take this out, I'm going to add some sodium chloride. And when I add some sodium chloride, the ions are now going to be free because of those molecule ion attractions. The water, the, the negative part of water, is going to surround the positive part of the ion. And the positive part of water is going to surround the what? The negative part of the ion. And what you're going to get is a solution, aqueous. These ions are becoming free. And when they're free, the ions are able to migrate to one side or the other to conduct the charge. So here we go. Ionic compound. And you notice Ernie is lighting up. Why is Ernie's face disappearing and lighting up? Because of the free ions. Very important. So salts are electrolytes because they conduct electricity in the liquid form or the aqueous form when the what? Ions are free. It's how our body conducts electricity through our body. We have dissolved ions in our neurons. In this animation, what I have is magnesium chloride melted. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on electrical source. Now I'm going to increase the concentration. Notice the chloride is the big green circles and the magnesium is very small. The magnesium got small by losing weight, losing electrons, the chlorine got bigger. I'm going to increase the concentration, but notice the ratio. The ratio is two chlorines to one magnesium. Why? Magnesium is plus two, chlorine is negative one. Now let me turn on electricity. Whoa, what just happened? All right, the positive charge attracted the negative chlorine ions, and the negative side attracted the positive magnesium. Why? Why did that work? Because the ions were free to move. They can only conduct electricity when what? When you have free moving ions. So you can notice, watch them, watch them move again. Turn them on, they're moving! And because they move, we can have a circuit and close the circuit. Electricity is being conducted because I'm creating what? A negative side here and a positive with these ions. Very important. So in closing, the properties you need to understand are all based upon the crystal structure. Look at this. It's called galena. This is lead sulfide. This is lead a metal and sulfur. Notice the ID ending. Look at the crystal formation in galena. Look at the iron oxide. Look at the crystal formation. Notice they're solids. It's iron, Fe, and oxygen. Notice the ID ending. All right, copper sulfate has a different type of ion called a polyatomic ion, but look at the beautiful crystal arrangements. Because they're in these very stable crystals and they, uh, they attract each other, they have high melting points. And secondly and finally, they conduct electricity only when their ions are free, and they're called electrolytes only when their ions are free, in a liquid state, when they're heated, or when they're dissolved in water in an aqueous state. And those, my friends, are the properties of ionic compounds, all dependent upon their crystal arrangement.